The key thing about all of these elements then that we're looking at is that they have one electron in their outermost shell. And chemistry is all about electrons. We can um, excite these electrons uh, or we can share them and move them around from one atom to another. Okay, now, what we have here is a sodium street lamp. Very bright indeed, and you've of course seen this. This is used to light up our streets at night. Incredible yellow color here. But why is this yellow? Well, if we take a normal lamp, this is a normal filament lamp, and we split up all the colors that come out from this, what we would see is the uh, spectrum, a rainbow of all the colors like we see on the screen here. So we have a lamp, and we're actually shining the lamp just on, a, on a, the corner of a DVD, and this is splitting it all up into the colors of the spectrum. So this is normal white light. If I move my little camera now that we have here, so here's the little camera, there's you, move the camera and put it into uh, this, onto this one, we don't see a complete spectrum here. What we actually see are discrete lines. So only certain colors are coming out of this lamp. This lamp contains a number of different atoms. It actually contains uh, some mercury and cadmium and zinc. It's a calibration uh, lamp here because it has uh, quite a lot of these lines. But the lines that we see are unique to every atom. It's like each atom has its own rainbow barcode that's unique to every atom. And we can actually work out what the atoms are by looking at the exact colors that are given. So here are the colors that are given by the group one metals, if we split up the light from these. We see, for instance, that sodium has just one very, very bright yellow line there. It's actually, if we look really close, we see that it's two very closely spaced ones. But that really dominates, and this is what we're seeing here. Other elements have their own unique colors. This potassium is often described as sort of lilac-y color, and this is a rubidium lamp here, a rather purple color. Well, What's the origin of these? Where does the color come from? Here is our sodium atom. I've only taken just the outermost electron. We've forgotten about all the other ones, just to keep things simple here. And we're going to give this some energy. So here's some energy here. We have some energy. We're going to give it some energy. And look what happens to the electron. The electrons get really excited now. We've given it some energy, and it's gone to a higher energy level. So here it is, very, very excited. But then it goes back to its normal state and gives out that energy. So it's returned to normal now, giving out that energy in the form of light. And that's what's taking, part, uh, taking place here in the sodium street lamp. OK, so we've seen the lamps here. And we can see that uh, sodium is certainly very useful for lighting our streets. But uh, rubidium really wouldn't be with this uh, rather purple color. But let's see this in practice now uh, with some chemistry. So we're going to do exactly the same thing now chemically. So the letters at the back here are soaked in compounds containing the real elements. So here's a symbol for cesium, and we've soaked this in uh, cesium salts. Here's rubidium, soaked in rubidium salts. Potassium. Here's sodium, the same yellow color that we saw from the street lamp. And here is lithium. So the colors that you're seeing are due to electrons being excited, and each element has its own particular unique color there. So chemistry is all about electrons, sharing electrons, promoting electrons, and so on. This is what we're seeing here.